Oh. From the top once again. Hello humans, my name is Dale Kingsmill and this is episode numero dos. I shouldn't try to Spanish. Two. It's a most Two. <laughs> That's the one Two. of memory lane. Just like last time, I'm here with Anthony yeah. and with Natalie. And we are going to read some of your stories. You hopefully know the drill uh, from the last episode, but if you don't, uh, we will be pulling out a story provided by you, either in the YouTube comments of the, of the previous episode or on reddit.com slash r slash monarchs factory, uh, where you can submit your anecdotes. We will read one of them and we will see where that story takes us uh, and what it reminds us of from our own lives. Mm. So who wants to pick the next story? Me? I'll be lucky last. We got one from Mac Millen. I was a human porcupine once. During a camping trip for Boy Scouts, I got into a tug of war with another kid for a piece of quartz we found. I don't and, like where this is going. And wound up falling back first into a cactus patch. Took three hours to pull out all the spines. I love how it's about a quartz. It reminded me of um Smeagol and Gollum. Oh, not Smeagol. <laughs> <laughs> was it Deagle? <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, was Spiegel someone strangled? <laughs> oh, okay. Me of that. All right. So now we're going to set a timer for ten minutes, and we're going to uh, follow this this train. I was off. I was just about to tear this in half. Uh, anyway. Poor Macmillan. <laughs> Sorry, Macmillan. I didn't tear it in half. It's fine. Woo! It survived. I it didn't flew. Very well. All right, it let's do this. It was set free. So, uh, the quartz straight up reminds me of during my graduation show. So, uh, many of you know that I was a theatre major at mm. university, um, and our big graduation production was uh, called Distance to the Moon. And it was kind of like absurd and surrealist and really cool. It's based on this um, sort of modern Italian fairy tale. Yeah, um, I watched it. Hey! Ooh. Hey! Friends, important that? friends. Wow. Um, and and, I was asleep. and it was like a it was like a series of monologues from this fairy tale. And I'll see if I can get some pictures from it because yeah. it's really bizarre. There was this moment. It was like the second I think monologue from it. Um, I just finished my opening monologue, and then I went over and I was like wearing a hoodie that was pulled in really tight around my face. Um, so the image of it is really bizarre and surreal. We had this video camera that was recording a live feed of me standing there, but a lot of the time it had stuff crowded in front of the lens so that people couldn't see what I was doing, getting changed into the hoodie and whatever. Um, but one of the things, they were holding up a bunch of different stuff that was meant to be objects on the moon, and one of them was a stack of crystals that someone had brought uh -oh. in. And there was like this lump of quartz um, that had come in, and my friend Charlotte was I was Charlotte holding it? Someone was holding it, and everything just got dropped um, oh. from the camera. Uh, like that was that was the plan. You like hold it up, you drop it, it's in a big pile at the end, and they just shove it out of the way when they need to. Um, and we'd done it like a bajillion times. Everything was fine, but on the second night of the show, uh, the quartz was dropped and it shattered. Oh. And none of us noticed that it shattered because there was like a towel or something down there that that softened the the sound, so we didn't know that it had broken. And my friend Charlotte went to swipe everything across. Um, to get it out of the way, and she just cut open her hand on this broken quartz, mm -hmm. and it was bleeding like mm -hmm. nobody's business. And hers was the next monologue, so she then had to go and sit and perform her piece while like clenching her fist to stop the blood oh. from dripping everywhere. She was Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> in <laughs> yeah, Django. Django and Jane. Ah, oh, yeah, no, totally. Sure. And so poor Charlotte had this big gash on her hand oh, that we God. didn't get to deal with until the end of the show, that none of us really knew about until mm. the end of the show. And then she had to perform the rest of the uh, nights with it as well. So that was did a compliment to character. Um, I don't know if we exactly had characters. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Or was postmodern was it? Exactly. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Yes, it was. I will give you that that one was postmodern. <laughs> like I have a postmodern counter. In there. <laughs> um, How many postmodern stories have been told today? Well, my story is a lot less elegant and a lot less postmodern, <laughs> <laughs> and it starts on um, a family holiday when we were little. And we were like, I don't, I can't even remember where it was. It almost feels like a fever dream or something. We're like on this like mountain looking across this like vista and um it was like a lookout and so mum and dad were like talking with other tourists and they're really getting along 
and me and my younger brother Alan we were just like farting around and for some reason I don't know why I like had to pull out this rock out of the ground reminds me of the quartz and I was like really try hard to pull it and from the exertion I did like the smallest most petite fart like and the people heard and mum and dad were so embarrassed what what's a petite fart just but <laughs> just one of those like <laughs> that's exertion. That's exertion. <laughs> Ooh, boy. Um, that's how you know the pop is really doing his job right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether I, I should tell this story on the internet, but look, it's yes, happening now. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so, not last year, 2015, uh, I was in the States for six weeks and I was staying with Omar and Mia. And over that period, uh, July 4th happened. And uh, oh. Mia's family and Omar's family uh, were kind enough to sort of take me in and let me celebrate with them. Um, and the night of Fourth of July, <laughs> we were it was it was Mia's whole family, so like extended family, like cousins and stuff. They're all like the coolest people. Um, and we were we were downstairs at their house on the beach, and uh, we were watching Spirited Away, <gasps> which I love. But oh. I swear to this day, I have never managed to watch the whole movie in one yeah. sitting because I always fall asleep at some point because oh. it's so like dreamy. I think oh, I think it's like it. uh, listening to oh, a Neil Gaiman live reading thing. You just kind of go. Ooh, I have to try to stay awake. Um, but no, I I fell asleep like I always do in in Spirited Away, and I I still don't know if this is what happened. But I have the vaguest memory. I feel like there, there may have been a moment when I tooted myself awake. <laughs> but I don't know because I, if I did, I fell asleep again straight afterwards. So I don't know if it happened or not. But that could be the prevailing memory that me and extended family has with me. Like, that I was this Australian girl. Tooted. 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 Petite farts, tooted. I'm that Australian girl who, who appeared for 4th of July and did um. herself awake and spirited away. <laughs> did you guys please listen to, dance to, or sing Yankee, Yankee Doodle Boy? What? <laughs> All you Americans, I hope you know that song. It's fantastic. I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy. It's great. It's one of those songs they also play on carousel rides. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's great. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't have a good injury story, but I do have a, a fart story. Oh, yeah. So well, we're on fart stories now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Episode two. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're we, uh, my class. My friends and I used to have, like, horror movie nights. And when, I think, the fifth Saw movie came out, we, I think we marathoned all of them. Oh, oh dear. I in preparation that. for that. And I think it was Saw. I just remember we were at my house watching, watching, people getting cut up. watching this movie and the only scene I remember is um, this woman comes into the room and she's looking at the camera and in you can see her behind her, someone comes in the door. Oh. And so we're all there watching and uh, we named the character Piggy. That's the only other thing I remember because we kept yelling out, Piggy, no, no, Piggy behind you. And then one of my friends got so scared that she just did a massive fart. <laughs> And it just... Oh, oh, I okay. I like it how the farts have like gotten bigger and bigger. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh boy! It was just it just broke all the tension of the movie. It wasn't scary <laughs> after that point. Um, oh my god! My my sister has a friend who it feels wrong telling this story when I'm such a tertiary uh, member for it. Um, but my sister has a friend who, when they were in high school, had this huge crush on this dude. And um, she, she tells the story of one day when they were sitting in the school hall and he was like sitting on the stage being cool and, she, and he said something and she tried to be like <laughs> and do like one of the big like flirty laughs and she just did the, she just ripped the most massive fart imaginable. But I tell you what, happy ending, they've been married for years. Hmm. So... I think there I go. have a fart story to full stop oh these boy. fart stories. No, okay. I, have, I have two <laughs> oh God. that I just thought, why did I tell that other one? Because I have two better ones. I used to do karate. Oh, <laughs> this is already <laughs> and, You don't um, want to cut out for you. We were like doing karate stuff, as you do. And we did a lot of stretches. And 
ever forbid, I farted. <laughs> and they, everyone heard. And the, the um, sensei, she goes, what was that? Here. And I was like made to like stand in front of everyone and bow and apologize for the fart while everyone was laughing. That's amazing. I, that's like the opposite of in the theatre degree. They they give a prize to the first person to fart in a new year of theatre. Don't try people. to fart oh, okay. as a karate. Well, yeah, because you do heaps of yoga and stuff, so they expect oh. everyone to fart. So they're like, first person to fart gets a prize for bringing oh. the attention. Well, mine's a drama related story. Oh, okay. good. We were in. Uh, year eight, and it was one of those things where the whole year was sitting waiting for an assembly, but there was some sort of technical difficulty, so they just start, got us to start playing a game while we waited for them to set up. So they said, we'll just do a quick game of Space Jump. Oh, nice. So they asked for six volunteers, and they were doing their thing, and uh, one, of these, one of the kids that, was, that had volunteered, Declan, um, he was like the fifth or sixth person to come in, so we already had like four good scenarios of like people actually attempting to play the game. Mm -hmm. And then they just went, all right, space jump. Declan jumped in and yelled, hey everybody. And then just did a like a <gasps> massive fart. And that was- It's like a Super Mario like, fart. Whoa. It's a me. Yeah. Uh, hey everybody. And then um, I feel like we're all laughing. I have people who can fart on command. Cause it's year eight and farts are hilarious. Farts are still hilarious apparently. Um, but yeah, so he was, he did that. We're all howling with laughter. And then the drama teacher just came in with like a really, Oh, a really straight face and she goes, Declan, that is not a scenario. And she like yelled at him for that. You know she's right, it's not. It's, it's not a scenario, scenario but... I mean, uh, it, uh, okay. <laughs> I could spin that as a scenario. But that is it for today. We are done. We have run out of our 10 minutes. Uh, thank you very, very much for watching. I hope that those stories that came to our minds enabled you to think up stories that only come up during... I can just imagine you have, like, this really conservative viewer who is just disgusted. So offended by our <laughs> fart stories. I didn't expect it to get report. into fart stories on episode letter. two. It's my fault. You'll just uh, get a letter that says I shouldn't expect it, because, you know... Too. Um, anyway. Eight of those ten minutes were fast. <laughs> it's so true though. Um, if you did have any stories come to mind as we were talking, then you can go ahead and share them with us in the comment section down below on YouTube, yeah. or you can head on over to uh, reddit.com slash r slash monarchs factory mm -hmm. and share them with us there. You may. I am Dale Kingsmill. You can find me on Twitter as well at Daily Dale, as well as a bunch of other social media places. They'll be in the description below. Anthony, where can um, they find you? Well, on YouTube at The Russian Blue Channel, and also on Twitter and Instagram at The Russian Blue. Isn't that nice? And Nat, we're filming this at the same time as the last episode, so even she's still, if you still you have she a is an enigma, you still can't find She is a spirit. Um, what if I just it. make a Twitter account for you and yeah. tweet on your behalf? Someone made a Tumblr account for me, but that was popular, and I never used it. Oh well. So yeah, but you can just build more pressure to to make yeah. a peer pressure. Right. Yeah, it's gonna happen sometime. <laughs> it's gonna happen. Um. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to this channel for weekly content. And uh, apart from that, I do believe that that's it. I'm done. Email this to your grandma and we will see you some other time. You're right.